National League, where the world's greatest football is played, any team can beat any other team on a given day. The second week of league play provided the proof, and you're going to see it right now, as only four teams remain unbeaten after two weeks of league competition, and some of the top contenders go down to defeat. You'll see the Rams edge the Steelers by one point. The Packers take the Bears. The Browns roll over the 49ers. The Colts surprise the Lions. And the up-and-coming Cardinals up and the Giants. The rampaging Redskins tame the Eagles with preseason form going out the window all down the line. The rugged Los Angeles Rams, off and running in quest of the Western Division crown, meet stiff opposition from the Pittsburgh Steelers in a spirited interconference battle at the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Steelers, under coach Walt Kiesling, won their opener, but then so did the Rams. Both teams play a rough, tough brand of football, giving this game all the earmarks of a pitched battle. The Rams have been strengthened by the return of number 40, Elroy Hirsch. Quarterback Billy Wade will have crazy legs available as a prime target for his passes. Late in the first period, veteran Los Angeles quarterback Norm Van Brocklin passes in the flat to Dan Towler. The Big Deacon totes the ball to the Pittsburgh 15, where the first quarter ends in a scoreless tie. The Rams, anxious to post points in their side of the scoring column, come mighty close as Bob Boyd snares Van Brocklin's pass and goes out on the one-foot line. Deacon Dan Taller topples into the end zone, and the Rams score first to lead 7-0. Pittsburgh tries the airborne route, but Jim Finks finds the ceiling to be zero. His aerial is intercepted by Les Richter, who races to the Pittsburgh seven. Pittsburgh then presents a steel defense, and Los Angeles settles for a three-pointer from the field by Les Richter. This gives the Rams a 10 to nothing spread. The final play of the first half coming up, and it's a Lulu. Van Brocklin fakes once, but there's nothing fake about this pass. Bullet Bob Boyd sprints into the clear for a jackpot play of 74 yards. This puts the Rams under new coach Sid Gilman in front 17 to nothing at the intermission. A second half comeback by Pittsburgh is set in motion as Jim Finks pitches to Ed Burnett on the Los Angeles 18. Lynn Shadnoy battles the Rams every inch of the way as he fights for a nine yard pickup. Shadnoy begins his crusade again, and it results in a touchdown. Pittsburgh hangs up its first score, but the Steelers trail 17-7. Los Angeles in punt formation. Van Brocklin drops the ball, and the Steelers drop Van Brocklin to take over on the Rams' 11. Finks takes advantage of Pittsburgh's first break with a spot pass to Ray Matthews worth eight yards. Jim Finks worms his way over. The Steelers fail to convert making it a 17-13 game, but that one point is going to prove costly. With Billy Wade directing the Los Angeles attack, the Rams run into a ton of trouble. The Steelers rush Wade off his feet. Billy fumbles and Pittsburgh recovers deep in Ram territory where the third quarter ends. The Rams' four-point lead doesn't look so large now. Lynn Shadnoy makes that lead disappear entirely in the fourth quarter as Pittsburgh takes the driver's seat for the first time. It's the Steelers on top, 19 to 17. Los Angeles pulls out all the stoppers. Van Brocklin's pass to Tom Fears sears Pittsburgh as the Rams invade their territory. Rookie halfback Cecil Taylor totes the ball to the Pittsburgh 18. Norm Van Brocklin, the Rams' big money quarterback, Whips a touchdown toss to Tom Fears. That puts the Rams back in front, 24 to 19. It's the Rams again, but with smog rolling into the Coliseum, the Steelers begin to feel at home. Cecil Taylor fumbles. Richie McCabe scoops up the loose ball and filters through the fog for 50 yards. With five minutes to play, Pittsburgh has recaptured the lead, 26 to 24.
Los Angeles fight back with that never say die spirit. A Van Brocklin to Boyd pass nets 28 yards. The Eager Steelers, anxious to make sure that Boyd stays down, are assessed 15 yards for a personal foul, moving the ball to the Pittsburgh 25. With time remaining for only one play, Les Richter enters the game and splits the uprights with a 33-yard field goal. It's a heartbreaker for Pittsburgh as Los Angeles wins in a Murrowell style, 27 to 26. Thus, the Rams remain unbeaten and they look like the team to beat in the Western Conference. Hey, surprising Packers, reminiscent of the Packer powerhouses of yesteryear, are ready and waiting for George Hallis and his Chicago Bears. Green Bay coach Lyle Blackburn has had his Packers in an upsetting frame of mind of late. Green Bay's Gary Canapel, star of last week's victory over Detroit, hopes for more of the same today. Number 16, George Bland sparks the Bears as a passer and place-kicking specialist. There's no score in the second quarter as Green Bay's Breezy Reed sweeps left end to the Chicago 40. The Packers are underdogs, but they're taking the upper hand. Tobin Road tosses to Gary Canapel for eight yards. Chicago's Burley Bears hold the Packers at bay, but they can't cope with Fred Cohn, who boots a 24-yard field goal. Green Bay goes out in front, three to nothing. Late in the period, the Packers take over again, and Root gets them going with a 13-yard run through the befuddled Bears. Green Bay, which last year was the tough luck team of the league, enjoys a finer fortune here. Root's toss is taken by Bill Houghton for a score. At the half, Green Bay holds sway 10 to nothing over Chicago. The Bears, who were completely bottled up in the first half, shake Bobby Watkins loose for six yards. Watkins carries again and brings the Bears to midfield. The pesky Packer holds strong, forcing Chicago to attempt a field goal. George Bland a kick from the 47. Bland his boot clears the bar. The Bears are on the board, but trailing 10 to three. Green Bay is enjoying its newfound prosperity, and they're after more. Howard Ferguson tears by the Bears on a 57-yard trip to the Chicago 17. Resistant Packers roll on. Breezy Reed rips through the middle for 15 more. Tobin Road pushes his way into the end zone with another Green Bay score. The Bears weren't counting on anything like this. They trail 17 to three. It's the last quarter, but Green Bay isn't standing pat. Road connects with Bill Houghton for a 15 yard pickup. Green Bay goes all the way here. Tobin Road twirls a toss to Gary Canapel, who grabs the ball and completes the trip on the ground. Green Bay wins its second straight by downing the Bears 24 to three. It looks as if the balance of power in the National Football League is leveling off and any team could cop the crown. Something has to give as the San Francisco 49ers and the Cleveland Browns meet in Kezar Stadium. Both are picked as top contenders in their respective conferences, but both are looking for their first win in league play. 49ers with the ball in the first quarter. A tittle toss is a total loss as Tom James of Cleveland cuts it off and races back to the San Francisco 28. The world champion Browns are off and running as Ray Renfro rams up the middle for eight yards. Fred Morrison goes crashing over left guard to the eight yard line of San Francisco. Otto Graham bulldozes over for the Browns as they take a 7-0 lead over San Francisco. The prospectors strike back as Joe the Jet Perry pulverizes the Browns on a 16-yard surge. Y.A. Tittle lopes back from the Cleveland 38 and levels a perfect strike to Billy Wilson on the 23. Quarterback Tittle picks out the same hole in the Cleveland defense, and Billy Wilson is there to put the prospectors on the Brown 11 as the first quarter ends. 
The 49ers hit the scoring column in the second period as Gordy Saltaw kicks a 17-yard field goal to make it Cleveland 7, San Francisco 3. With the Browns in possession, Otto Graham flashes the form that made him famous as he hoists a beautiful pass to Doug Jones, who completes a 43-yard play. The Browns look like the team that waffled the Lions for the championship as Graham pitches and Brewster catches. Lavelli takes Brewster's lateral to the 49er one. Ed Mozaleski crunches across them for the touchdown that ups the count to Cleveland 14, San Francisco 3. After forcing the prospectors to punt, the Browns are at it again. Graham sticks the ball in his hip pocket, then pulls it out in time to pass to Darrell Brewster on the 49er 20. Lou Groves' golden toe is called into action, and Automatic Lou lifts a 32-yard field goal over the crossbar to make it Brown 17, 49ers 3. Again, San Francisco's forced to punt. Charlie Knoll charges in to block Bobby Luna's kick, and the Browns recover on the 49er 24. Otto Graham moves to cash in on the alert work of the Browns' defensive team as he rolls out and passes to Dante Lavelli on the Prospector 4. Fred Morrison finishes the job, and at halftime, Cleveland leads San Francisco 24 to 3. In the third period, the Browns are at it again as Graham hits Lavelli for 11 yards. Otto Graham's back in the groove. He sends Fred Morrison crashing to the 49er 20. Morrison gobbles up another chunk of ground as he carries to the nine yard line. Ed Mozaleski scores his second touchdown from the one. The Browns are pouring it on as the score mounts to 31 to three over San Francisco. In the fourth quarter with Ratterman at the helm, the Browns keep right on going. Fred Morrison feels Ratterman's pass on the rebound and gets to the 49er 16. John Pettibone battles for seven yards and the Browns threaten again. Maurice Bassett thunders into the 49er end zone to close out the scoring as Cleveland thumps San Francisco 38 to three in a convincing display of the power that makes them a top contender in the Eastern Conference. For the second straight week, those frisky Baltimore Colts who figured as cannon fodder for the big guns of the National Football League spring a major surprise. Their victims this time are the Western Conference champions, the Detroit Lions. Detroit's deep in Baltimore territory early in the game, and that's Bobby Lane passing. Joe Campanella detours the Detroit toss, and the lumbering lineman returns to the Colts' 18. Baltimore, which strengthened itself immeasurably during the winter draft, puts George Shaw, one of its prime selections, on display. Shaw rips off an 18-yard advance. Shaw proves a pinpoint passer as well with a perfect peg to Harry Hagatian on the Detroit 25. Georgie Shaw, rookie sensation, fresh from the Oregon University campus, carries the Colts deeper into the Lions' den. Alan Amici cracks across to count for the Colts. The underdog Colts shake up the Lions by taking a 7-0 lead. Detroit strikes back with one masterful stroke by the arm of Bobby Lane and a sensational arm straining catch by Jim Doran. The Lions hang up a score. Detroit fails to convert and trails seven to six. In the second quarter, Baltimore is forced to punt. Detroit's Bill Stitz fumbles the kick and the alert Colts recover deep in Lion land. George Shaw, passing like a seasoned veteran, sparks the Colts to an amazing 14-6 lead with a touchdown toss to Jim Mutchler. Later in the period, another new Colt, Alan the Horse Amici, stampedes the Lions with a 58-yard cross-country gallop. 
This gives Baltimore an even more amazing 21 to 6 spread. Detroit, not used to such harsh treatment, rallies its forces. Veterans Bobby Lane and Jim Doran combine to put the ball on the Baltimore 41. Bobby Lane baffles the Baltimore secondary with a 12-yard pitch to Jug Girard. Another lane to Girard sideline pass stops the clock with the ball on the Baltimore 10. Only 14 seconds remain in the first half, and Lane makes the most of them with a clutch touchdown pass to Jim Doran. At halftime, the defending Western Conference champion Detroit Lions find themselves trailing the upstart Colts 21 to 13. Baltimore sets out to increase its advantage in the second half. Shaw whips the ball to Ray Burry for a 15-yard gain. Shaw is throwing nothing but strikes. This time, George connects with Buddy Young on the Detroit 38. George Shaw, the Oregon sharpshooter, spearheads the Colts attack with another completed pass to Lloyd Coulteryon, who battles five lines for 15 yards. Shaw, Baltimore's new passing sensation, gives the Colts an offensive you must have to win in this league. Coulteryon goes out on the Detroit 6. Georgie Shaw caps a fine performance with a six-point pitch to Lloyd Coulteryon. The unbeaten Colts take the measure of the Detroit Lions, 28 to 13 in a major football upset. In a league where there isn't a soft touch to be found, the New York Giants and the Chicago Cardinals, both hungry for their first win of the season, meet in Comiskey Park, Chicago. The New Yorkers get the first break in the game. Chicago fullback Johnny Oshevsky fumbles, and Herb Rich recovers for the Giants on the Cardinal 24. The defense asserts itself, so Booten Ben Agajanian splits the uprights with a perfect 21-yard field goal. New York leads 3-0. With New York in possession late in the period, Charlie Connerly fires from his own end zone. But Jim Saltis intercepts for Chicago on the 7 and brings it right back for a touchdown. The upset-minded Cardinals lead the Giants 7-3. The Giants slam right back as rookie Alex Webster circles wide, then cuts back across the field. Finding plenty of running room, Alex romps 71 yards to the Cardinal 5 before he stopped in a desperation lunge by Lyndon Crow as the first quarter ends. Quarterback Connerly completes the drive with an eight-yard touchdown pass to big Bob Schnelker, and New York regains the lead at 10 to seven. Intent on upsetting the giant bandwagon, Chicago's Lamar McCann hits Jim Carr with a bullseye. Carr speeds down the sidelines and into the end zone on a brilliant 90-yard run. But the officials rule that Carr stepped out of bounds on the giant 48. But the cards force the brakes their way. McCann passes to Ollie Matson. Ollie gallops 51 yards for another card six pointer. The successful conversion gives the fired up cards a 14 to 10 lead over the Giants. The Giants' Charlie Connerly leads a comeback surge upfield. He passes to Buford Long, and the New Yorkers are in Chicago territory. Connerly fires once more and hits Alex Webster for 14 yards to the Cardinal 29. Chuck and Charlie finds Buford Long in the open, and Long gathers it in on the Cardinal 16. With the Chicago defense geared for the forward pass, Alex Webster circles inside left end and races 16 yards into pay dirt. 
The Giants again take the lead at 17-14. Chicago's McCann rallies his forces. He lofts an aerial to Jern Negler on the giant 38. Jern gallops into the end zone on the end of a brilliant 74-yard scoring play. At halftime, Cardinals 21, Giants 17 in a seesaw thriller. In the final period, the Cardinals spread their wings in quest of another score. Dave Mann proves all man as he puts on a one-man show with a dazzling dash of 65 yards, which seals the doom of the Giants. The Chicago Cardinals fly high with an upset 28-17 win over the New York Giants. The high-flying Philadelphia Eagles, the only National League team undefeated in 1955, are trying to make it eight straight under the lights of Connie Mack Stadium as they face Washington's Redskin Spoilers, who last week upset the world champion Cleveland Browns. Leading Washington three to nothing on a first period field goal, Philadelphia moves late in the second quarter as Gian Canelli picks up five. Bobby Thomason takes to the Eagles element with an aerial strike to Gian Canelli. Skippy wriggles into the end zone and the half ends with the Eagles leading nine to nothing over the Redskins. Things look black for the Redskins as Philadelphia opens the third quarter with a 30-yard pass from Thomason to Walston that puts the Eagles on the Washington 15. Bobby Thomason and Pete Pijos hook up to shake up the Redskins with a 15-yard payoff pass that gives Philadelphia a comfortable 16-0 margin. The Redskins are far from licked, as you're about to see. Eddie LeBaron leads the Eagles a Murray chase before pitching to John Carson on the Philadelphia 22. LeBaron again skips back and looks. He spots Vic Janowitz and hits him. Vic finishes the job, and it's Philadelphia 16, Washington 7. As the Redskins kick off, keep your eye on the ball. It bounds away from Ed Sharkey. Norton grabs too late as Ralph Thomas pounces on it and rolls into the end zone for Washington's second touchdown in nine seconds. Eagles 16, Skins 14. Don't go away. An Eagle fumble after the kickoff puts the Redskins on the war path as LeBaron flips to Janowitz and it's goal to go on the Philadelphia four. Janowitz crashes across for his second touchdown, and in less than three minutes, the Redskins rocket from nowhere to take the lead over the Eagles at 21 to 16. The bedraggled Eagles set out to repair the damage. Thomason finds Pijos available for an 11-yard strike. On the next play, Skippy Giancanelli takes a wide pitch out and scampers all the way to the Redskins 36. Quarterback Bobby Thomason gets away a long pass. Jerry Norton has it, and it's touchdown Eagles as they regain the lead over Washington at 23-21, but the third quarter isn't over yet. Dale Atkinson brings the skins right back with a 13-yard gallop to his own 48. Little Eddie LeBaron comes straight back and lofts a mighty toss downfield. He leads Bert Zegers just right, and Bert barrels all the way to the one-yard line before Bob Hudson pull him down from behind. LeBaron sneaks over for the Skins as they take the lead over the Eagles again at 28 to 23 to close out a third quarter in which 42 points were scored. Once in the driver's seat, the Skins intend to stay there. LeBaron lobs a running pass to Bert Zegers on the Philadelphia 10. Vic Janowitz puts his personal point total at 19 with a perfect field goal that gives Washington a 31 to 23 advantage over Philadelphia. With the fourth quarter running out, the Eagles try to come from behind. Thomason fires to Bill Stribling on the Washington 19. 
Thomason tests his eye again and throws true to the mark. Stribling wraps it up and scores as the Eagles come to within one point of the skins. But there's no more time as Washington remains undefeated in league play by defeating the Eagles 31 to 30. Wide open National League, it's a tough assignment to pick a play of the week. There are so many great individual and team efforts, but this week provided a real standout. It was in the Cardinals-Giants game, as the Cards' Dave Mann put on a one-man show with a breathtaking open field gallop of 65 yards. That capped the Cardinals' great victory over New York's powerful Giants. Mann's elusiveness and canny use of his blockers gave Chicago fans a thrill they'll long remember.